Let's look at an example. Let's say I've asked uh, my students um, whether they study physics or history or both or neither. Okay? And what's happened is that I've found that eight people study physics only, four study history only, three people study both physics and history, and five students study neither physics nor history nor both. Okay, so this is the Venn diagram that I've filled out. Now, I haven't written the probabilities in these sections. I've written how many there are in each section, which is perfectly, a perfectly valid uh, form for a Venn diagram. And from this, I want to work out the probabilities of each of these. So I've made a, a nice selection of probabilities that I could potentially be asked to find. So we're going to start off right at the top. Find the probability of a student, 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 student studying physics. Okay. So I need to work out how many students there are in total to start off with. That'd be useful. And I've got five, eight, so that's 13, 16, 20. So I've got 20 students. And now I want to think about, right, well, how many of them study physics? Well, we have eight that study just physics and three that study both physics and history. So in total, I've got 11 who study physics. So that's 11 out of 20. And I'm going to leave it as a fraction. If we're looking at history, then we have 3 plus 4, so 7 out of 20. Now, if we're looking at the probability of physics intersection history, that means the probability of physics and history. How many students study both at the same time? And so that would be 3. So there's 3 out of 20 who do that. If I'm looking at the probability of not H, then I've got 7 who study history, and so 13 don't. And so that will be 13 of 20. And I can find that just by adding the 8 and the 5 together, for example. Now we're getting on to uh, a slightly more tricky one. What is the probability of stu a student studying physics and not history? OK. So they don't study history, but they do study physics. And that would be those eight there. So you're looking at the overlap between not H, which is effectively outside of H. So if we do a separate diagram down here, here's H, here's P. So not H is that bit there. So that's not H. And P is this bit here. So where does the red overlap with the blue? Well, it overlaps in just this bit here, this kind of crescent shape. And so that is just 8. So it's 8 out of 20, which obviously you, you can simplify these fractions down. I'm not going to worry about that. Now, the property of not P. So similar to the property of not H, we're just going to look at 4 plus 5, which is 9. So 9 out of 20. You can also work it out as 1 take away 11 twentieths. The probability of physics union history. So physics or history or both. And so that is 8 plus 3 plus 4. And so 15 out of 20. Then finally, you've got the probability of not physics or history or both. OK, now that's a little odd to think about. So sometimes with these, it's going to be a case of let's draw a Venn diagram to help us. Well, another Venn diagram. So we've got not physics, which is outside of P. Or history, or both. So outside of physics, or history, 
or both, which is this crescent shape here. And so we're including everything but that 8 that I've got left over. And so this would have to be 12 out of 20. And that is how we can use Venn diagrams to help us. Okay? Now, in the next video, I'm going to work with exactly the same example, so you may want to continue watching for the next one, and I'm going to introduce the ideas of conditional probability.